Today we're exploring the beer scene in Brattleboro, Vermont. One standout brewery in this local scene is Hermit Thrush Brewery. Hermit Thrush is the brainchild of President and Brewmaster Christoph Gagne and his beer-loving friend, Vice President Avery Schwank. Together, they have dedicated their craft to producing top-notch new American sour beer, created through the use of historical brewing process, oak cask, and some new green technology. So let's meet up with the crew and see what they have in store for us today on the 8 Brew. the pharaohs of Egypt, beer was considered the national currency. Now that's how I like to get paid. Getting to see different types of breweries and cideries is what we're all about here on the 80 Brew. One standout brewery in this local scene is Hermit Thrush Brewery. So here with Vice President of Hermit Thrush, Avery Schwank. Avery, just real quick, want to go over a couple of things with you as we oh, go through the brewery. What brought you here? I uh, met Chris back in college. We actually had a radio show together. Get out of town. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> it was the Friday night, like midnight to 2 a.m. slot. Nobody else wanted it. We had a cooking and eclectic music show. So we, uh, we got to know each other back in school. We both kind of went our separate ways, had different careers. We're still in the Philadelphia area after school. and. Uh, eventually came up with the idea to open up a sour brewery in Vermont because we both love the Northeast and Vermont's a beautiful state. Did you actually start brew, ever do brewing like when you were in college? Or? Oh, I, heck no, I wasn't drinking. I was uh. under 21. <laughs> <laughs> of course I wasn't drinking. After college, I actually moved to Montreal for a couple of years. So I spent from about like 19 to 22 in Montreal. That's where I got to love Belgian beer. I learned about sour beer. Uh, so when I moved back to the Philadelphia area and was spending time with Chris, that's what he was brewing. I became his chief taste tester, and you know, the rest is beer history. But when Chris and I wanted to open Hermit Thrush, we were both really interested in environmental stewardship and you know, taking care of our environment and making a product the right way. So we were trying to focus on eliminating fossil fuel use. That's why we use wood pellets for all of our process energy. You know, finding ways we can reduce water usage in our brewery. Um, so we, uh, you know, have a lot of different places that we can reclaim heat or cut down on our water usage relative to a lot of other breweries uh, in the state. So we've got like our kettle stack condenser. So all the steam that's coming off our, of our brew house when we're boiling beer, some of that water goes down the drain, but then the rest of it gets captured. We get the heat out of that steam and put that back into the brewing process. So all those little things that really add up at the end of the day just to make your energy usage and your, your carbon footprint as small as possible. I know we gabbed a little bit even before uh, we got on camera about the canning. Oh yeah, uh, even canning was a decision. Canning. So yeah, uh, when we were first starting, canning was really, still is kind of coming into to be a much made, a bigger player in the craft brewing scene. So when we were trying to decide whether we want to make beer in bottles or uh, make beer in cans, we looked at, you know, what's the energy usage of them? Cans are lighter, so they ship for cheaper. It's also a lot less energy intensive to recycle than glass. We also get a lot less breakage, so we have a better safety environment for right. our workers. It also treats the beer better. You don't get any light spoilage. You know, you can, uh, it's just overall a better package for beer, so that's uh, why we chose it. And that's why we're moving forward with just cans. Coming up next on the 8 Brew.
Next up on the 80 Brew, Christophe Gagne and his beer-loving friend, Vice President Avery Schwang. So behind me here are the what are fooders, fooders that are from Italy. They hold 100,000 pints of hermit thrush beer. The ultimate party guy libation. So like also, you know, while we're gabbing here, we're talking about the fooders. Oh yeah, fooders so from not Italy. just barrels. You know, everyone's familiar with barrels. You get wine out of barrels, you get liquor out of barrels. But there's also, the, when you need upsize, you have fooders. They're basically giant barrels. <laughs> so, you know, normal breweries have their big stainless steel equipment. We want to use wood for as much as possible. Again, looking at environmental sustainability, wood is much better than stainless steel. Right. And this is reused wood, so even better. But that really lets us do so much more fun things with our beer and you get different flavors, different oxidation. It just gives us more of a playground and they're just beautiful. Yeah, they're yeah. awesome looking. So also too then, uh, with bottling then, we're going into the product production stuff and, and we were talking about all the different, the yeasts and all these different materials. You guys pull most of the stuff locally from what I As much as Chris. we can. So we get a lot of uh, our fruits harvested locally. We work with a local with apple orchard, berry farms, um, a lot of our hops, hops come locally from about 20 minutes away at a Four Star Farms in Northfield, Massachusetts. We even try to get our barrels locally when we can. We work with three or four uh, in-state manufacturers, uh, both in the liquor and wine industry, and reuse some of their barrels so we get some of those flavors, some of that terroir and kind of Vermont product into the flavor of our beer as much as possible. So uh, the last thing though, just without a doubt. Yeah. I think that your beard's definitely longer than Chris. Absolutely. <laughs> Chris tries to get around it, but at He's the end of the day. He's pulling around it and yeah. it to the side and all this stuff, <laughs> trying to get me in sales. And I'm like, oh, dude, I'm like, I'm going to have to put like weights on yeah. him, like braided like a pharaoh. <laughs> hey, we're here with Nate Skull, the production manager here at Hermit Thrush. Nate, talk us through a little bit about what's going on behind us here. Well, we're brewing a batch of uh, barrel-aged beer. Uh, we're going to start with the hot water over here, um, as all beer does. You run that through the, the mash, uh, so basically you're making um, kind of like this oatmeal out of the grains to break down the sugars and make it into like little bite-sized pieces for the yeast to eat. So you have these long sugars, and through heat, we chop it up to little pieces and kind of spoon-feed it to the yeast. So that's what we're making over here. We made okay. the mash, we pulled all the sugars out, put it into the kettle over here, and we bring it up to, to boil. We'll boil it with, with some hops, and then cool it down into a fermentation vessel um, and oxygenate it. Basically give yeast everything it needs to make beer. Being in the production port of it on your end, what's your vision going ahead? Where do you see Hermit Thrush in your mind? more aged beers. I, I would like to age them out further than we have been. Uh, I think they deserve a lot of time and eventually people under will understand that a five-year-old beer can be a beautiful and elegant thing. Uh, so I'd like to, we've already set the groundwork for that, uh, but I, I, we have all these barrels that are empty and I want to fill them all. And wow. I want them to get a lot older. Inspiration, building it right on it. Yeah. And there's Nate, our production manager here at the Hermit Thrush. Next up on the 80 Brew, Christophe Gagne. All right, so I'm thinking that probably by the time I'm done here, I'm gonna grow. <laughs> I am mean, I'm coming at that. It's contagious. Yeah, yeah, I would imagine so. If I touch up against it, if we rub them, will mine grow longer? I'm terrified. <laughs> <laughs> so here's a fun fact. There's a temple in Thailand that's constructed of a million bottles of Heineken beer as well as one of their local beer. I guess beer's worship no matter where you go. Here with Christophe Gagne. He's our president and brewmaster here at the Hermit Thrush Brewery. 
Christoph, what you got for me, man? Got some sour beers. Oh boy, uh, this is gonna be my first sour beer taste <laughs> ever, huh? They're dying for the look on my face from this one. Hoppy sour though, so I'm going easy on you. This is Potweet Sour Pale Ale. Potweet? Yeah. Oh wow, yeah. That is tart. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a bunch of Sour Patch Kids just jumped in my mouth. <laughs> but it's smooth though. Yeah. So how'd you get started with this whole brewery stuff? Let's talk about that real quick. Uh, I like drinking craft beer. Uh, I was a cook a while back, and so I'm just sort of interested in flavor. Um, I'm interested in the craftsmanship return to uh, manufacturing in America. I think it's an exciting trend. And um, I was home brewing in my, my basement in Philadelphia for a bunch of years, and uh, sours are the beer that I could find the least of, and therefore wanted the most. Interesting. <laughs> I just I fell in love with the barrel aging process too, and gotcha. wild yeast and all that complexity. What's your favorite beer? What's your super favorite? Super funk. Soup funk. It's definitely super funk. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, super funky. Yeah. And uh, it's our our wine barrel aged sour saison. So it's a pale ale, okay. but it's not all that hoppy. It's got a lot of funk to it. It's got some acidity to it, and it's got you know notes of French oak and the the beverage history that was in the barrels first. Um, they were last used for wine, for example, and so the, the beer itself takes on a little bit of that flavor. Gotcha. So describe to me your American sour ales, as you call it. Yeah, so um, we sort of depart from the Belgian tradition a bit, and uh, we do both kettle sours and barrel sours. Um, the unifying thing is that everything we do is tart. Uh, that little bit of acidity is, is part of what makes the beer so good with food. Um, it's also uh, indicative of our wild yeast uh, uh, mixed cultures. So um, essentially the, the yeast and the, is the focus of everything. The fermentation is everything. Um, when we make beer, we are simply making a house for the yeast to live in and trying to make that as well as we can to allow the yeast to go the way that it wants to. Um, and we're working with uh, cultures of 150 to 200 different microbes in every beer as opposed to just one yeast. Whereas if you're using wild native yeast from around you, uh, you're engaging terroir. You're, you're doing a wine-like thing, but using beer as your medium. Um, and so, so we do some, some hoppy kettle sours, which are fun because they're, they're quick beers, they're bright. It's a, we do two very separate fermentations, um, and we hop it pretty aggressively. Um, hop it aggressively, <laughs> I like that term. <laughs> uh, and then we also do barrel-aged sours, which tend to be less hoppy, more along the lines of wine, and so we sometimes we fruit those, sometimes it's just pale ales with less hops. Um, we do some, some sour brown ales aged in red wine barrels, stuff like that, so it's kind of, um, it's an ever-evolving palette of microbial uh, curiosity with uh, old-time process and, and kind of finding the best local ingredients and that, that we can. Where's the recipe book? In the back. And how thick is it? Or is it just written it's, on a wall? It's, right now it's about this. <laughs> I was it's just, it's a stack. I mean, yeah, because it's got to be crazy trying yeah. to remember all this stuff. Yeah. Well, wow. I mean, we keep active, you know, record keeping, but like we st we're changing recipes all the time. We're doing new batches. We're trying to make the best beer we can, not the same beer we made last time. Hermit Rush. Where, where's that coming from? I have been a bird nerd my whole life. Really? And uh, we do things as a, environmentally as we can here. Um, so we use cans instead of bottles. Uh, we fire our brew house with wood pellets instead of oil or propane or some uh, fossil fuel that we need to start leaving in the ground. Okay. And so it just sort of made sense. It's the Vermont State Bird and it's a heck of a bird too. By the way, I'm like kind of out. This is working for me, this <laughs> stuff, by the way. Nice. <laughs> so if you could, freshen me up, please. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so Chris, so we're in the cellars, right? That is what this, this is called. And uh, this is where you guys store all these barrels of your beer that's aging. Uh, tell me about it. What do we got going on here? Yeah, so barrels are what uh, develop the beer. 
Um, we, we make beer relatively similarly to how you typically make beer. Uh, yeah, we saw with Nate and did that whole production yeah, process. Yeah. But so then we pop it into these guys and, and like what's the, what's, what's the process inside? So once it gets in here, it's in a, uh, a state of yeast uh, proliferation and, and uh, the microbes start to get interesting. So as the fermentation progresses, other stuff takes over and you sort of get this community of, of uh, microbial complexity. Um, and, and that really leads to a lot of the aromas and flavors that you taste in, in barrel-aged sours. God, that sounded really romantic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so talk about the, the wood, though. Is there different yeah, types yeah. of woods from so, one so keg American that we're oak, looking at, or barrel that we're looking at? Yeah, yeah. So there's American oak, there's Hungarian oak, there's French oak. Uh, they all have different base flavors. Sort of uh, American is that vanilla that you taste in bourbon. Okay. Um, French oak is a little uh, deeper, spicier, er earthy kind of. What's Hungarian? Um, I got a little Hungarian in it's kinda, It's kind of nutty and, and spicy. There we go. And, nutty. Uh, of course it is. It's, good. it's, <laughs> it's delicious. Hungarians. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and so your oak, oak choice matters if you're getting new barrels, but even more than that, we like to use uh, used barrels. So we like to get wine industry stuff that has some beverage history in it. We uh, saw some of them when we were walking around here. That, uh, uh, there were some gin ones, yeah, whiskey yeah. ones so that we saw. Right over here is Caledonia Spirits, uh, wonderful barrels. Uh, they're delicious and they make our job easy. Okay. Uh, Tomcat is their uh, barrel aged gin. Um, and it's phenomenal. It's got a little bit of honey in it. Botanicals are really tight. Uh, it's it balances super well with the funk and a saison. So we talked about the saison. What's that all about? Yeah. And where are we going with that? You said releasing in the future. Yeah. So so gin barrel saison is uh, the best that we could find in Vermont barrels with the one of my favorite styles of beer. Saison is this uh, old French style of beer, just sort of farmer's beer. It's what you had on hand. Uh, it's what you worked with, it's what you uh, had safe water from, and uh, they tend to be on the funky side. Uh, hay and kind of uh, uh, sunbeams in a loft and like, you know, that it, anywhere to, from like basement to like cheese rind, you know. Um, but so we're gonna profile, is that the term then, that you're building into what that beer yeah, is? Yeah, yeah, so it's, its roots are in this really earthy, funky kind of thing, and then Essentially, gin aromatics, the botanicals in there, the juniper, and, and certainly all the other stuff that varies from producer to producer, um, have very complementary flavors to funk. Um, and, and so we, we love the sort of vegetative green, uh, bright flavors in Caledonia's Tomcat, um, as well as its super mellow kind of nod to honey. Um, and it just, it blends with the, the true heart of Saison very well. I don't really think that it can go too long. Uh, the flavor's gonna continue to develop, it's gonna get funkier and more tart, which are both things that I love. Uh, so more of those things I'm totally down with. We're putting sour beer in cans, it's, the irreverence is necessary. Uh, it's and an amazing those the, amount of creativity that yeah. goes into this thing. Yeah. And it's constantly changing. Yeah. That's impressive. I like it, I like it a lot. <laughs>《The Art of Beer Making》continues. Chris and Avery's journey has only just begun, and exciting things are on the horizon for the guys at Hermit Thrush. So thanks for sticking with us on the 80 Brew. Here's to nights that we'll never remember with friends that we'll never forget. Cheers. Constructed of a million bottles of vodka. Yeah, there you go. Okay.